says these are just a few of the many scientists whose peer-reviewed published works have found possible links between vaccines and autisms. But unlike the Lewin Group study, their research was not endorsed, was not promoted by the government, and was therefore not widely reported in the media. In fact, news reports, blogs, and quote-unquote medical experts routinely claim no such studies exist. And she clarifies, she said, to be clear, no study to date conclusively proves or disproves a causal link between vaccines and autism. But despite the misreporting, none have claimed to do so. Each typically finds either A, no association, or B, a possible association on a narrow vaccine autism question. Taken as a whole, the research on both sides serves as a body of evidence. A body of evidence that we as individuals should be treated with the respect that we have that information that all of it is reported to us, that the conflicts of interest are reported to us, that they get our consent. And that's where Ben Carson and even Donald Trump is arguing back and forth the merits, the demerits of vaccines or whatever. It's not their decision to make. If you take that decision away from us, you get things like the Tuskegee experiments. You get things like the experiments on people in Nazi concentration camps, in German and, and Japanese prisoner of war camps. Those are horrendous abuses that were done in the name of the greater good. They were prohibited by the Nuremberg Amendments. They were prohibited by medical ethics, and they're prohibited by the Constitution and our individual rights. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today, Alex Jones is out, and he is reporting in from the airport. As I found when I was traveling recently on my vacation, he has also come across some issues with the TSA, as we all do. And as I filed my report, many people said, well, just don't fly. Just boycott it totally. I agree. I think we ought to try to reduce our flying as much as possible to put pressure on the airlines to not support this kind of authoritarian treatment at the airports. But the same token, I don't want to allow them to keep me in a box. So I try to push back as much as I can. Well, that's opting out, essentially, because I know they don't like to do that. I don't like to do it either. But I try to be a monkey wrench into the system as much as I can. Nothing is going to really change, however, until the vast number of Americans stand up and say no. We can do that. Whenever Americans stand up and say no, they always back down, but they have to know that you're going to stand up for your rights, that you're not going to take it anymore. Shout it. I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it anymore. I mean, that's what we have to do collectively. We have to stand collectively for our individual rights instead of just surrendering this to them, allowing them to control our movements. And it's going to get much worse. As I pointed out shortly, they are going to make people who are traveling within the United States, citizens within the United States, carry a passport if their state has not qualified for the national ID card, real ID. So it's going to continue to get worse until we stand up and say we've had enough. Reporting in, here's Alex Jones. Folks, Alex Jones here reporting live as I board a Southwest Airlines flight from Denver to Austin from Omaha. I went up there to conduct some business and also to attend a wedding. And I had some very interesting experiences up there uh, analyzing what's happening to the country that fits into what I witnessed uh, in areas of Europe about a month and a half ago. I'll be back tomorrow live hosting the entire five days of the week myself and then the Sunday broadcast coming up. And we're going to be breaking down the Pope's visit uh, to Philadelphia, D.C., and other areas, his visit that's currently happening in Cuba and how huge this is, uh, and more. I haven't had any big TSA problems uh, until today. And because of the fact that they had part of downtown shut down because of a marathon, I uh, got a little late to the airport. And so I thought just for a test, I would go ahead and do the naked body scanner. I've refused it for five years, as everyone knows. thought I'd do it so I could basically analyze the experience uh, after demonstrating against it. So even though I went through the entire process, uh, they then wanted to search us and went through all of our bags and found Concord grape jelly uh, from Nebraska that I bought at a farmer's market in downtown Omaha yesterday. Again, I was out checking out the economy doing research. And uh, they said, we're going to let you fly today because of this violation, but you're, you're, you're really lucky that we're even letting you. I mean, this is America where our own government funds ISIS and Al-Qaeda, where our own government ships in the major narcotics, where our own government is involved in every crime you can imagine in the world. And they got these ridiculous internal checkpoints like dog training to prepare us to be slaves. And they sit there with a straight face and searched me for 
35 minutes until I barely made my plane and got such enjoyment out of it. And they were clo they were closing the door as I got on. Southwest actually basically waited for me and the crew member I brought. So this is what America and the world has turned into. And it just illustrates how everything is about him pecking us into submission. Political correctness, zero tolerance, nanny state, all of it is about training you to comply, training you to be a minion. And none of it keeps us safe. The enemies run the country. Criminals have taken over. It's proof. It's fact. And I was reading today where a police chief said that Black Lives Matter groups are targeting police or engaged in domestic terrorism. It's classical terrorism by its very definition. They fired him. That story's on Infowars.com, North Carolina. Um, it's just amazing. I think it's at Homeland Security for veterans and gun owners and patriots, and we've done nothing. And the very groups funded by Soros that are meant to destabilize the country are allowed to run wild. I'm just sick of it. I mean, to watch the quote security services used just as a condition and tool for the general public is wrong, and I stand against it. But we have a lot of special reports. I was able to shoot video of some of those to take photos of the whole TSA, you know, confiscates grape jelly. And we'll be going over all. But there's so many other big epiphanies I've had while I've been on this trip. David Knight's about to come back live, but I'll be breaking this all down tomorrow. The Lord willing, pray for us. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the syndicated uh, daytime weekday show. I want to thank you all for the support with the Money Bomb. We're going to launch the full syndication on television now. It's going to have a big effect, so I want to salute you all. And I just want to appreciate what you've done. You definitely stand at the heart of InfoWars. All right, Alex Jones for InfoWars.com signing off. So we're back live tomorrow. And remember, if you're listening to this transmission or watching it, you are the resistance. And again, it's another example of what we continually see from our government. Completely open borders and the same people that run that, Homeland Security, are harassing us endlessly over minutia and Silly things like grape jelly at the airport, like you just heard Alex report. And, of course, there was a story that I talked about earlier from Tech Dirt. Don't retweet about ISIS or you could go to jail. The FBI considers your retweets to be endorsements, especially when it comes to chatter about a terrorist organization, ISIS. And they point out this is not the first time. They say, so the next time you see someone's Twitter bio and it says retweets aren't endorsements or something along those lines, know that the FBI doesn't agree with that. And, of course, look. We know that our government created ISIS. Are they going to arrest John McCain, who is meeting with the leaders of ISIS? We just had an article the same day as the Republican debate well, on CNN. We had articles in mainstream press, confessions of the leader of ISIS, talking about how he had had uh, the uh, CIA and others help him to bring in Chechen uh, Muslims that have been fighting Russia, bring them into Syria. We know that our government has funded and trained and imported these terrorists. And yet, if you tweet about them, then they're going to possibly put you in jail because you have to, they have to maintain this control. If they can establish the principle that they can do to you whatever they wish, then that means that they can change the definition of terrorist at any time as they wish. A terrorist can be anybody that they label as a terrorist. So they have to establish these principles. They're going to put the Muslims out there as the boogeyman for us, even though they are the ones who are equipping and funding and training the worst of the Muslim terrorists out there. Now, along those lines, we had a, um, we've had a back and forth in the media about Donald Trump and uh, whether or not uh, uh, he should defend Obama against charges that he's a Muslim. We've all seen how uh, he praises Islam, criticizes Christianity, and uses the federal government in a politically correct way to suppress Christian expression of religion. Look, when we see this back and forth going on about gay marriage, we understand that people should be able to associate however they wish. And there needs to be an accommodation is how we're going to accommodate people's religious conscience along with that other freedom. And there are ways that that could be done, but they're not interested in exploring those ways. They want to have that kind of a conflict. They push for that kind of a conflict. That's what we see repeatedly. And they've escalated the idea that now religious freedom is, is subordinate to the freedom to marry whoever you wish. So they uh, sue people who do not provide services, services to them because they feel that they would be participating and celebrating for that. There is no accommodation whatsoever 
for religious freedom, rather a subjugation of that. So in that context of what was said back and forth between Donald Trump uh, about Obama and in the context of what's been going on in the last few weeks with the Supreme Court, today on Meet the Press, they asked candidate Ben Carson whether or not a Muslim should be elected president. And this is what he had to say. He said, I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of their, this nation. I absolutely would not agree with that. That was reported by the AP as saying, Carson said that Muslims shouldn't be elected president. It's not quite the same thing. He's putting out his opinion there. You may agree or disagree with it. He wasn't saying that this was something that was uh, prohibited by the Constitution or that he would prohibit. He said he would not agree with it. He would not advocate it. They also say that he did not specify in what way Islam ran counter to the constitutional principles. And I think, quite frankly, if we look at this, there are some issues with Sharia law, with where Muslims are deriving their authority that conflict with the Constitution. But in the same way that Joe Biden conflicts with the Constitution when he denies natural rights and the purpose of our government. We'll talk about that more when we come back. Stay with us. We're going to get back to what we were talking about, the revelation from Ben Carson. I want to unpack that a little bit more for you. It was reported, Ben Carson does not believe a Muslim should be president. What does he really mean by that? What was he saying? I want to get back to that and also look at Donald Trump's latest policy paper about the Second Amendment. Uh, Trump has only done two policy statements. He's done one about immigration, one about the Second Amendment. Both of them are very, very detailed compared to what the other candidates have put out. Other candidates have a lot of issues that they talk about. And it's interesting to see what they choose to talk about, what their issues are. That tells us something about it. They give us a little bit of information about where they would go. But Donald Trump has given us more detailed statements than we've seen from any of the other candidates on most of these issues. Uh, Bush has uh, put out a fairly detailed economic statement, but uh, not anything that's truly controversial about what you would expect to see from him. So we're going to talk about uh, Trump's latest uh, policy paper, the Second Amendment. And I think uh, whether or not you agree or disagree with these issue statements, I think it does everybody a favor to talk about something in detail. I mean, you still have to ask yourself, is this something that he will make good on? Is this something that has been uh, something that he's cared about, that he deeply cares about, that he understands that is a principle, or is it simply a position? You'll have to make that assessment. That's my problem with Donald Trump. I've seen him on both sides of these issues. But nevertheless, let's talk about some of the issues that are brought up because he does bring up some really important issues. We'll get to those in just a moment. Before we do, just wanted to thank you once again for supporting us in the Money Bomb that began on Wednesday. We had a 28-hour broadcast. It was uh, donations as well as specials that we had on our website. And again, we've extended those specials at InfoWarsLife.com. We've extended that until midnight tonight. Free shipping as well as massive discounts on many of the supplements and nutraceuticals that we sell there. Also remember that we're only about 95 days out from Christmas. We've got T-shirts and other things that are on the site that are available, and you can still get free shipping for that. So it's something to think about in terms of uh, gifts coming up even. But some of the specials that we have on things that will make a difference with your health. 25% off Survival Shield X2. That's our nascent iodine that was sold out, but we got an emergency shipment back in. 25% off of that and DNA Force. 30% off Super Male Vitality. 20% off Brain Force, Silver Bullet, and 15% off Deep Cleanse, Secret 12, that's our vitamin B12 supplement, and Oxy Powder. And one other, 20% off of Prostagard. That's $5 off the typical uh, price of Prostagard. We have reviews on all of these products that you can see at InfoWarsLife.com. That will help you to see if it has been uh, helpful to other people. You can also see the ingredients. And for example, in Prostagard, we are proud of the ingredients that we put in our products, unlike the Dark Act, which wants to hide the fact that uh, many of the uh, food manufacturers are using GMO products in their food. We are proud of what we put in. We are very careful to put in natural ingredients that support your body's functions naturally. Prostagard is a good example. It has saw, palm, saw palmetto, vitamin D3, lycopene, plant sterols, zinc, many things that naturally support your health. And take a look at the reviews that are there, what people have said that it's done for them. Here's Jerry from Waterbury, Connecticut. He says it reduces frequent urination. He says, I've had an overactive bladder for a long time. 
and started dealing with it again recently. When I heard that InfoWars Life was selling this product,